my friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life. And the husband has stepped out of the house for a minute, which is nearly impossible these days to have a minute to yourself in the house. And so I'm going to bring to you my Valentine's Day date night unboxing. Of course, we have plenty of activities that we're not going to be showing here, but we wanted to have just a fun night. We normally, we normally go to the Shrine of St. Anthony and have a lovely dinner with friends um, but of course, they're not hosting a, a Valentine's Day dinner this year, and there's not even a Valentine's Day Mass. I mean, it's just the regular Sunday Mass. So I really like the blessing of marriages and that special date night out. We do it with another couple, and it's super fun. But so we wanted to up our couples game, which sounds really funny, um, two different ways. And one of them is just playing games. Do you remember the old fashioned card clubs? As our beloved Aunt Joan was passing, we talked so much about her card club and how much friend, fun people had at them. And we're looking forward to COVID being over and being able to host some friends coming over and just playing cards. Now, as young adults, moanlessly, what we played was poker. And honestly, it wasn't that fun. I feel like most of the girls didn't even enjoy playing. Like we, you, whoever's turn it was, like we rotated whose turn it was to deal and you got to pick which version of post poker. I always picked the one where you didn't actually get to pick any more cards. Was it called Mexican poker? I'm not sure. You just had to deal with the hand you were dealt. <laughs> because I just, it was just too much. I just couldn't deal with it. And, and it's a singles game. So it's not really drawing out on the couples aspect of it. And I don't know. It just, mm, whatever. So what did we get? Okay. When we talk about Aunt Joan, everybody in the family talks about how Aunt Joan and Aunt Mary would play canasta with you. I literally have no idea how to play canasta. My grandmother taught us to play all different kinds of solitaire and rummy. Rummy was our big one. So I was kind of excited when I found this set. Um, it's a little bit of a cheater set. You can see it's going to have the point value on it, which means nothing to me. I was just like, ooh, that sounds like it will make it easier. So what's in this box set? In it is two packs of cards and I did already open one so I can show you what they look like. They don't seem to be anything special. They seem to be normal card size. So it's like, what? Okay, right away though, adorable little joker, but he has a number 50 on him. I have no idea what it means yet. And then the Ace of Spades was also a cat. I thought they were all gonna be cats and they're not. Um, so it's just the jokers, I think, in the aces. Oh, no, not even the other aces. Hmm. I don't know what that means. And the jacks and the queens and the kings are normal. Ace of spades, normal again. Now they do all have numbers on them. I have no idea. Oh, ace of spades, still normal. Um, and here's our other little joker. So they're different. Here, I'll show you the two jokers. Ta-da! And then there's two playing cards at the end, which I don't know. I thought those were going to have directions and they did not. So I was a little startled by that, but it's okay. Cause I'm still going into the set, right? So I assume that there's little number values on there. Maybe they help me with scoring again. I don't know. I have no idea how to play Canasta and my husband doesn't really super remember it either, but I remember as kids, it was kind of fun. Um, my impression is that you can play with a partner or you can play in as singles. So it gives you some options, especially like what if you have an odd number of people show up or somebody's not married, then you could probably play with singles or people could rotate in and out. So in here is also this little box. And when I open the box, it's one of the, do you guys remember these? We had these when we were younger. Um, it just, we used it a lot with Uno, I think when my son was younger. But it's just one of those little rotating discard and draw pile caddies and it spins. So we've got that. I don't know that I need to put the plastic back in. There's a lot of packaging for this, but I imagine it's because it's a set and maybe you can buy all these things separately. Um, the little box does make it nice that it goes back in these boxes because if I were to travel to somebody's house, I could take this with me. And then there's a score pad, which again made no meant nothing to me. And on the back, this was the instructions. I feel like that's scoring instructions only because it says things like uh, mixed canasta, natural canasta, 
ace or seven natural canasta, ace or seven meld, no canasta. I don't know what these things mean. So that did us no good. We were kind of disappointed when we opened the box, but I'm super glad I opened it early. Um, and now you know what's in it. It is a super cute set. The box is, it's it's like, um, this is about an average book size. Maybe a smidgey smidge bigger. Pretty close. I mean, it's pretty thick though, but it's still easy to grab and go. So I do still really like this box. We added to it a little book according to Hoyle. This is the one my husband said was in his house growing up. He was fairly sure this was the edition because there are multiple editions of this as well. Um, so just the name is not going to help you. This is the, does it say? This one was done in 56, 65, and 70. Um, it says 70 was the last one, but then some of the, the laws of contract bridge were 1981. So interesting. Anyway, so let's see if Canasta really is in here. I haven't even looked yet. Yikes! So fun and family games. Games for two, games for three, games for four, and partnership games. Gambling games, solitaire games, games for children, dice games, board games, parlor games. So that's nice. It's not just card games either. I found that that's pretty nice. Um, so let's see. Canasta, yeah, it's under Games for Four and Partnership Games. It's on page 90. I hope it's more than just scoring directions. Can you feel the suspense building? Let's see. <sighs> we'll start up. There are many variants of Canasta, but the original game is probably still the most widely played, and the variants merely add to Canasta a few features that are quickly grasped once the parent game is known. The most popular variants, together with some of the many local customs and special table rules, are described at the end of the section. Oh, yay, okay, because I did find that out. Apparently it was originally a South American game, but it's been changed and adapted over the years, and so it's not truly South American, but I think the South American one is still played some places, so I'm glad they've separated them out here. That's gonna make that easiest. Players, two to six, it is best for four. As a two-hand game, Samba is better. See page 97. With two or three players, each plays for himself. With four or more players, there are two partnerships. With four, partners sit opposite each other at the table. With five, two partners are opposed by three, but only two of the three play at a time, rotating so that a different one of the three is idle each deal. With six players, three on each side, partners sit alternately around the table, or six may play with one player of each side in active each deal. I don't, okay, that got a little confusing. Cards. The game is played with two regular decks of 52 cards plus four jokers. Okay, so I could have bought regular cards. All 108 cards being shuffled together. The jokers and deuces, and it has in parentheses two spots. Deuces, so it's just a two, I'm guessing, are <laughs> wild. A wild card may be designated to be of any rank at the pleasure of the owner. It doesn't even say dealer, it says owner. Six players may prefer to use three packs with six jokers. And then things that you would do preliminary, dealing, uh, red trays. Oh, that's a red three. The plays, melds, ah, so it does explain the melds. Let's see here. Canastas, does explain canastas. Minimum count, whatever that means. I'm just reading the headings, taking the discard pile, forcing, going out, concealed hand, asking permission okay irregularities so there is that is a fairly long thing oh and two-handed canasta and then at the end it says canasta variations and samba so samba is actually one of the canasta variations this book does not have any charts or diagrams and i won't lie legit this print is small tiny so um bring your readers with you i do have my monofocals on because they're my blue light glasses as well um, so definitely want to have on <laughs> glasses that you can read this or a little magnifying glass. This print is small. Perhaps this is available in a larger print as well. I don't know, but I'm excited. This does seem to have the rules and it even recommends one for just two players. So we can use that to get started. Very excited. This book is really going to make that set work. Hey, I wonder if this fits in that box. Maybe if I have, I might have to change the packaging, but let's see. Oh, 
Meh, meh. No. <laughs> no, it does not fit. I wonder if if I put the cards in the card holder, it will legit fit. I just took the cards out for now, but if you have the cards stored in the card holder, one deck on each side, that's going to fit. Yes, score. Okay, I'm very excited about that. Okay, still, people... My husband kind of knows I got this, but not exactly. Okay, and I might have snuck another game in him. In there, let's see. Oh, it doesn't have the pronunciation on the back, so now I'm not going to get it. I won't even try. It's not at all how it looks. I do know that. Um, we watch, I'll admit, we watch a lot of the marriage shows on TV. Like Marriage at First Sight um, is the one I'm thinking of. And all the time, the couples are given... Like little cute couples activities to help them get to know each other. This is so brand new. I have not taken the plastic off. So we'll see if Deanna can do that. Um, and this is supposed to be a game that draws families together. So it's not super a game. It's, it's like a conversation starter. If you've seen like the dice that you can roll at a table as a conversation starter. So let's see what these are. Oh, let me read from the back because there, there's no... Oh, here's the directions. Directions are inside the lid. The concept is all about enjoying a nice and cozy time. That's what that word means, the H-Y-G-G-E. That's what it means is like a nice and cozy time and good company. The focus means there's no winners and losers. The goal is simply to make it as nice and cozy as possible and everybody wins. You can use the questions pretty much as you see fit, but here's a few tips. You can ask them in any order, but the classic way is to have one person read all the questions on the card to the person on their left, who answers them one at a time. Then the person draws the next card and reads the question to the next person on the left. You could have one person read all the questions on a card out loud, one question at a time, with everyone taking turns answering each question. And then the next person reads the next card, and so on. That can lead to some really vivid discussions, creating a nice flow between them. It also allows everyone to participate in each question, which can be good if you don't know each other well. Or play in a more unstructured way, with players asking questions at random, depending on the question that strikes them as the most interesting. There's over 300 questions in here, so you don't have to ask. If one doesn't work for your group, just don't ask it. I could totally see you doing this. You could make like a little spinner or have a randomizer on your phone and pick who you're asking the question to. But it's just gonna be my husband and myself. So let's see. <laughs> How about this? Do genius and madness go hand in hand? What was your worst vacation experience ever? So you can see it can open up a whole new discussion. And really why I got inspired by this was one night in evening prayer group, someone said to me, did you make that blanket that's on the, the couch behind you? And I went into this long story about how it's one of the last remaining blankets that my grandmother made. She normally made lap robes to be distributed to hospitals and shelters and senior homes and how she did that even though she was nearly blind and that as she did in her whole childhood how she involved us children like I could go on it's a beautiful beautiful story and so just asking that one question did you make that behind you and then somebody shared something about their grandmother the next day and their family's heirlooms and treasures and it really helped us to get to know each other and so I thought this could be a really wonderful game how about what crowd were you a part of in high school? If you could go back in time and meet your 10 year old self, what advice would you give yourself? That one's a hard one for me because I had something traumatic happen at 11. So that'd be pretty different. Um, but you'd find that all, sorry about me. It's on here, it's in one of the early videos. Would you ever homeschool your children? Obviously, yes, because he, I homeschooled him from second to through high school. Um, what's the, sorry, through the end, straight through the end. Um, what's the worst thing about getting old? If you could be anywhere in the world right now, where would you choose to be? So they're discussion starters. I'm kind of excited about it. It's just something that might draw out some stories. We've been married for, uh, 26 and a half years, maybe. Um, and so I just thought that that would be a fun way just to even, talk to each other better. Some of them are about retirement and things, so they might be about dreams that we've never shared or something. That'd be super fun. Anyway, here is my, ah! sorry, little fake mic stand. Here is my date night ideas. And I know the hubby's got some planned as well. Uh, 
legit we rented a hotel room for Valentine's Day just to give us something a little bit different in this time of COVID where we've been home 24 seven for like the past year. <laughs> So we thought it'd be fun just to get out to a little hotel room and just be silly and play card games. Just like legit date night, right? Well, and oh, and we're probably getting a really good um, steak dinner from our local farm market. That's why we're getting a nice hotel room where we can cook as well. And then, because we love to go to like a cooking lesson on Valentine's Day is another favorite thing or date night idea that we love and we can't really do right now. So we thought we'd do that. Um... And that's it. Well, that's all I'm going to tell you about. Anyway, God bless, friends. I hope you enjoyed some of our date night ideas. Uh, put yours in the comment below. PG-13 only. God bless, friends. Bye.